Hello and welcome to another modeling video. This is Alan from the Mokona Man at YouTube with another model review. We're going for a vintage kit again. The 1980s Zok from the original anime Mobile Suit Gundam. This would have been reissued sometime during the 90s or for the 30th uh, anniversary some six years ago. I purchased this kit some time uh, when I returned from overseas and decided to use it for the Gundam Australia Under the Sea group build. It will also be on display at Smash. I've always enjoyed these old kits. Uh, they're glued together, but the original models had even uh, larger flash uh, fitting problems and the plastic was ever so softer. Though with these uh, newer ones uh, today, they still come with just as many challenges. With these very simplistic directions or instructions, inciting the old technique of paint on the runners, then glue together later with anything other than plastic cement. As a trademark of these older Bandai kits, we've got this horrendous green uh, plastic. Obviously, they haven't figured out uh, mixing the uh, dyes in the styrene yet, though they've uh, carried on this uh, tradition to the models today. The single page uh, directions and the uh, four piece runner set, all pieces accounted for. These kits do not contain poly caps and the uh, articulation are normally very dodgy and it's a miracle when some of them can actually stand on their own. The two uh, strategies to employ while having a go at these kits is either gluing them into one solid position or employing magnets or other uh, modification to add articulation. Uh, another one is start at uh, different steps because you normally want to wait until the putty dries on filling the uh, seam lines and sanding it down the next day before you glue on the next layer of uh, pieces or armor. So you may track backwards and forwards all over the um, directions and we've had the pieces uh, fit. The putty sometimes sinks and requires uh, further putty work. These kits can be uh, tedious from time to time, though their general shape has a uh, very uh, special quality on its own. Two other things to consider, some of these are completely hollow and can be top heavy, so uh, you may want to weight down the feet with um, some sort of substance in the uh, bottom of uh, the uh, feet uh, willows and also other pieces you may not want to glue straight away for color separations like the uh, claws and gun pods on this one which will be glued at a later date using two parts uh, glue. Here is the beast all glued together and done excluding the uh, claws and gun pods and yes he is quite the charming yet ugly little bugger all of its seam line uh, glory. I'm planning to do a diesel punk modification using uh, very large rivets and a few steampunk cogs. At this stage uh, I already should have a tutorial out and I'll link it below on how to apply uh, rivets. Uh, I drew these uh, black dots all over the place filled a medical syringe with PVA glue and slowly dotted them all over the place. Uh, for the love of all things that it's good, be careful when playing with the syringe and if you're under 18, uh, under supervision, please, please, please. To add a little extra, I uh, went to the Steampunk uh, Bits box and uh, flushed it out here and there with uh, some nice detail. Of course, the metal pieces got a little uh, clear etch Mr. Hobby uh, primer on top before painting. I masked off the area where uh, pieces are going to be glued off later with uh, blue tack. So on the arms, the claws and little gun pods with uh, the holes for uh, easy adhesion later. And primed everything with uh, Tamir uh, primer via the airbrush. Uh, slightly sloppy effect due to a uh, bad mix of uh, paint. I attempted uh, pre-shading by outlining areas with uh, black and refilling it in with some sort of uh, blue-grey colour. 
uh, pulling the airbrush back and shading. Uh, it doesn't look too pretty uh, here, but the uh, finished result uh, was not bad at all. The claws were employing a candy technique using Tamir Clear Yellow. The kit was hit with a coat of clear Tamir matte paint and then uh, MIG production pigments and the fixative was uh, applied throughout the uh, surface to give it an underwater heavy weather salt rustic uh, look also to complement the diesel punk. Uh, the old Citadel uh, black pin wash and its tiny details touched up and dry brushed with uh, a brush. And here is the uh, finished result. A quickie, assembled it during a few uh, club meets and painted and weathered over a couple of days at our home. Could it be not be more happy with the finished uh, with how old and unusual the actual subject is. Again, very impressed that it can stand by itself and that uh, the articulation within the arms and legs, even though it's limited, uh, works pretty well. The trick with the uh, mono eye, and when you see the actual cam, uh, the camcorder uh, footage pops out nicely like an LED. This is just a El Cheapo uh, crystal that I bought at a $2 shop that um, Asian women love to uh, plunk all over their mobile phones. A tutorial on that would be out later. I'm going to put a link down below of uh, the Gundam forum. Uh, anything with the uh, label on the titles would indicate that this is a part of the underwater uh, group build. Some of the uh, finest mecha artists and modelers of Australia uh, did enter including um, Ghost of uh, Zeon and some other vaguely recognizable names out there. Excellent work, a couple of old school projects but interestingly enough one of the gentlemen did also have a go at the uh, high grade Zoc and Mr. Walker, I believe his online title is. And to both of our surprise, uh, this guy is not that much different to uh, the today's rendition, even though some of the more square, straight edge uh, Bandai 1980 kits are just outright uh, horrible, but still fairly charming. This concludes this uh, review of the 1980 Zoc and my efforts at building it. A lot of fun. As always, I recommend having a crack at a very old uh, re-release of a kit. Uh, please don't kill any uh, real museum grade uh, vintage kits out there. Just have uh, fun with it. It's a blank uh, canvas that you can project anything you want onto it. And uh, they're just there for a lot of fun. And it's a very unique uh, fiction features and functions which will never be seen again in today's kits sadly. Uh, keep uh, companies re-releasing them by buying the odd one here and there just to have a go. This is the Mokana Man, catch you guys later, thank you for watching and until next time.